Brian the Lion here, your self-proclaimed connoisseur of the BGC dating scene. The man with just enough charisma to get away with saying the unsayable. And today we're deep diving into the paradox of dating in this shiny slice of urban paradise. Grab a drink, lean in, and let's dissect whether the so-called playground of the well-heeled and aesthetically enhanced is really as impenetrable as they say. So you're an American dude new to Bonifacio Global City, a jungle of skyscrapers and avocado toast that whispers sweet nothings of first world escapism with a tropical twist. The streets are clean, the bars are packed with the who's who of nowhere you've ever heard of, and the dating scene, oh, it's ripe with intrigue. Now, some of you are thinking, why BGC, man? Isn't it just a bubble? Isn't it just the matrix with better weather and more reasons to wear linen shirts? Well, sure, there's truth to that. But let's dive into what the dating game really feels like when you're surrounded by a cityscape that resembles the love child of Beverly Hills in Dubai. First things first, the myth of the Giga Chad. I don't know who started this, but somewhere between TikTok thirst traps and finance bro podcasts, the idea took root that to date in BGC, you need to be seven feet tall with six pack abs carved by Michelangelo and pockets so deep they echo when you drop change. Is there truth to it? Well, let's just say if you're a regular Joe with a dad bod energy, and a smile that says, I haven't flossed today, you might not be the most popular cocktail at the party. But guess what? The game is not rigged against you. It's just a little finicky. You see, in BGC, it's not just that some women have gotten used to foreign guys. It's that they've built up a whole dossier on us. They know our game, our pickup lines, our manufactured casualness. You think you're the first guy to lean against the bar with a half smirk and say, so what do you do for fun? Nope, they've seen it. They've lived it. They've swiped left on it. This isn't Kansas, Dorothy. This is the showroom floor of dating, where everyone's been window shopped a thousand times over. But are the women here snobby? Look, calling someone snobby is just a defensive maneuver when you're dealing with someone who knows what they want and isn't apologizing for it. The women here, they've got standards. And yeah, those standards might be influenced by the city's shiny exterior and curated Instagram aesthetic. They know the difference between a man who just wants a selfie for his Pinoy Adventure 2024 album and a guy who's got staying power. Someone who can talk about more than just the dollar to peso exchange rate, which by the way, I'm still marveling at. Thanks, Trump. But let's not gloss over what the YouTubers say, those prophets of clickbait wisdom who insist that if you want a real experience, head to the provinces. That's where you'll find a traditional, family-oriented, Pinterest-worthy partner. Look, I'm not here to knock the countryside. I'm a country boy. I've done my fair share of escaping into the picturesque unknown where time slows down and people still look at you like you might be the first non-local they've seen that month. It's humbling. It's refreshing. And yeah, you do feel a bit like a snowflake floating down in the middle of July. But this notion that BGC is impossible, a fortress guarded by designer heels and false lashes, nah. What it comes down to is what you're bringing to the table. In a city that's basically one big flex, are you surprised that everyone's checking credentials? It's not just the looks, though those help if you've been blessed or genetically funded with blue eyes and finance. As they say, you're not ugly, you're just poor. Because renovation can fix everything. It's about the vibe, charisma, the unsaid stuff. Do you make people laugh? Can you hold your own in a room full of folks who don't care that you used to be the coolest guy at your high school reunion? I've been here long enough, over a year and counting, thank you very much, to know that yes, BGC can feel like a gladiatorial arena for anyone new to the scene. Less than 1% of the population are foreigners, and even fewer are the kind that make waves beyond a curious glance. But impossible? Please. It's only impossible if you go in expecting everything to revolve around you because you've got that million dollar grin and an accent that says, I once paid $15 for a salad. Here's the truth bomb folks, dating in BGC is just like dating anywhere else that's got its shiny veneer. You might get the cold shoulder from time to time. You might even get outright dismissed by someone who's seen one too many adventurous expat types. But if you can show up with something real, whether that's a good joke, a deep conversation, or just the ability to listen, you're in. And if all else fails, well, maybe it's time to recalibrate. Maybe it's time to lean into that province trip where suddenly you are a novelty again. But don't forget, folks, there's a reason BGC is so alluring. It's not just a bubble. It's a prism reflecting every version of yourself you dare to bring out. So next time you're out at that rooftop bar feeling the vibe shift and wondering if your American charm is going to cut it, remember, it's not about changing who you are. It's about turning up the volume on the best parts, the best version of you. And if all else fails, at least the rent's still under $600, right? But the great debate, province girl versus city girl, I just can't stress this enough. It's a tale as old as time. 
or at least as old as the moment some wide-eyed foreigner first stepped foot in the tropics and thought, hey, this might just be the place where the sun sets on my bachelor days. The thing about this debate is whether you're in the heart of BGC with its dizzying skyline and relentless air of ambition, or out in a province where the only skyscraper in sight is a mountain crowned with clouds, the search for love or something that passes for it is a universal comedy. In the provinces, life slows down to a pace that lets you hear your own thoughts. Dangerous, I know. The girls, traditional, they say, family-oriented, whispers every blog that never quite knows how to define it but tries anyway. You'll find yourself in scenes that look straight out of a daydream, like someone pressed pause on the 21st century just to let you have a moment of peace. You meet someone out there and suddenly you're not another foreigner with a questionable tan. You're an anomaly, a curiosity that'll make the local gossip circuit light up faster than a Christmas lantern. It's endearing, sure, but don't think you're going to swoop in with your two-week fluency in Tagalog and immediately win hearts. It takes more than a few butchered phrases and some corny jokes to be the MVP out there. It takes sincerity, real rugged sincerity that can't be bought with a round of imported beers. But then there's Manila, and more specifically, BGC, where the skyline might as well be holding a neon sign that reads, we know who we are and we know what we want. It's the land of options, the buffet table of dating prospects. Step into a bar and you'll see everything from aspiring influencers testing the limits of filters in real life to corporate titans whose handshake is probably stronger than yours. And let's be honest, with Metro Manila being what it is, an anthill with a population density to match, you're never short on possibilities. A wrong turn in conversation here isn't a deal breaker, it's just part of the game. You win some, you lose some. And occasionally you'll wonder how you managed to walk into a night that ended with you at a karaoke bar, belting out my way like your life depended on it. And here it just might. But that's the beauty of the chaos. The city girl is savvy. She knows the score. She's not going to be dazzled by your tales of travel unless you've got a way of telling them that's a little left of normal. You see, in BGC, everyone's heard the basics. The, I moved here because I love the culture pitch. The, it's so much cheaper here than in insert first world city here spiel. Now, to stand out, you need to bring something more. You need to embrace the unpredictability. Play with it. And most importantly, not take yourself too seriously. They've seen the posers, the self-proclaimed kings of cool, and they can smell insecurity from a mile away. So be real or be gone. Now, a little perspective shift. Is the Philippines the best place to retire? Now, there's a question dripping with promise and a hint of midlife crisis. A lot of people come here thinking, this is where I'll find my peace. And in a way, they're not wrong. Life here has a way of teaching you to slow down, even when you're surrounded by the frantic pulse of Manila traffic. Extend that visa, friend, because when you find yourself sipping a San Miguel on a Tuesday afternoon, without a care in the world, you realize that you might have cracked some code, and at only 43 years old at that. But before you pack up your life and move halfway around the world like I did, hoping to live out your days as a cocktail-sipping, suntan sage, remember, retiring here is not just an endless series of perfect beach selfies and hammocks strung between coconut trees. There's still a real life to be lived, and that includes power outages, typhoons, and the occasional internet hiccup that'll remind you that the simple life comes with its trade-offs. And yet for all its quirks, there's something about this place that makes you forget the small annoyances, the warm smiles, the laughter that breaks out over the most mundane of conversations, and the way people here seem to prioritize human connection over, well, everything. And hey, maybe that's why you stay. Maybe that's why I stayed. Not just because the exchange rate makes me feel like a king, even if your net worth is basically a few stock tips and an old Honda back home. Not just because your rent here is so low it feels like a clerical error. No, you stay because you realize that this is one of those rare places where people still look you in the eye when they smile, where life, despite its complications, still feels genuine. And so you wonder, what's the verdict, city girl or province girl? The answer isn't in a neatly tied bow. It's in the journey of finding out what fits you best. It's in the countless evenings spent sipping drinks under neon signs or watching the sun sink behind rice patties, each moment adding a layer to your understanding of what it means to live and love here. So here's to the ride, the good, the awkward, the unforgettable. Welcome to paradise, friend. Stay as long as you'd like. And when the city noise gets too loud or the quiet of the province makes you itchy, just remember, it's all part of the story you're writing here. Go where you're treated best. In the land where possibilities just don't exist, they multiply. So until next time, remember to hit that like, share this chaotic uh, journey with your friends, you know the guy, and drop your thoughts in the comments. I read them all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. God bless you all.